Hello and welcome my dear students. How are you all? I welcome you once again in science lecture. My dear little gems, have you watched my previous lecture in which I have explained you chapter number 5 solid liquid and gases once again. Why have I explained you that? Because as you know that your internal test is approaching. You will have to prepare for that though the portion is the same till where we have finished before the vacation. But I thought let's do the revision of two or three important chapters which I feel that many students have not seen the video explanation video of. So my dear little champs, that is the reason why am I making the explanation video from the textbook. A whole lot of students were not having the textbook at first though as, as uh, after the survey we know that now 90% of the students have the textbook. So that is the reason why am I explaining you the chapters again with the textbook on the screen. So I hope that you are fully taking advantage of this revision explanation videos and henceforth you are going to prepare well so that in your internal test even if the questions are twisted you will be able to answer it precisely. So my dear students as you know that yesterday we have completed chapter number 5. What are we going to do today? Again today we are going to continue with the revision explanation of chapter number 6. Yes, that means few objectives we are going to solve of chapter number 5 but then we will continue with chapter number 6. So I hope that you all are ready with your textbooks. Those who are not having the textbooks they just have to sit and look onto the screen, listen to my notes, points and explanations and just have to understand it. So let's get started with today's lecture. Now as you know my dear little champs that this is the chapter which we have completed in the yesterday's lecture chapter number 5 solids liquids and gases in which first of all we did the warm up exercise then we understood what is solid what is liquid and difference between solids and liquids two points which I said that which was very much important then we understood what is gases so then after understanding all these three basic concepts we just solved again a fun to do exercise through which you got more detailed knowledge about what is solid, what is liquid, what is gas and how to differentiate, how to recognize solid, liquid and gas. So I hope now this concept is clear in your mind. Not only that but also in the yesterday's lecture after completing that I explained you each forms and how it changes, how uh, water becomes ice and again it becomes water and how water becomes uh, vapor and these all changes I have explained you in the previous lecture and not only that but also by looking at, at this diagram the changes and the process, the name of the process is to remember it was very much easy. So again when you just when the ice changes into water it only happens when you heat it so it is called melting process and when you heat the water again it becomes to gas that is called boiling process and when it, when it becomes the gas the vapor the steam comes out again when the heated water vapor cools down it forms the water droplets so again that process is called condensation and then again when you keep the water in deep freezing then it becomes the ice it is called the freezing process so this is a very easy concept understood by this diagram then furthermore we saw here the keywords solid liquid gas then the process is melting, evaporation, condensation and freezing. So I hope that you have revised this very well. So now at last let us 
solve the few objective questions so that we can move towards the next chapter i hope you all are ready i'm giving you few seconds to hold your pencils and then you have to solve it in your textbook itself i hope my dear students you are getting ready with your pencil and the book now those who don't have textbook i insist them to just be ready with their rough notebook at least you will be able to read the questions from the screen and write the answers in your book so just it is a matter of practice so when if you are writing in your rough notebook please make sure you write every single detail that is the subject date chapter these three things are the basic and the important thing if you are writing in the rough book you will have to write this down okay so now let's get started first question as you can see on your screen is fill in the blanks with the correct words that means the options are given in the brackets itself you just have to read understand and choose the correct option so this way you will have to fill in the blanks let's get started first question is dash is a mixture of many gases options are water or air now in which out of these two mixture of gases are there in the water or in the air so the correct answer obviously is air because air is the mixture of many gases including oxygen so air is the correct answer i'm going to write it down in the blank i hope that you too are writing it down next is all living things need dash to live options are oxygen or water vapor all living things means tree human being then animals so we all are living things so what do we need so basically here they have been pointed the human beings so what does the human being need to survive to live so do we need oxygen or do we need water vapor to live the answer is pretty easy we need obviously oxygen so oxygen is the correct answer i hope that you too are writing it down as you can see that i am writing the answers in the blanks so all the living things need oxygen to live number 3 water dash to form ice freezes or melts so my dear students when the water changes into ice like i have shown you in the diagram which process is it called when you change the water into ice do we have to melt the water no we have to keep it into freezing so water freezes to form ice so freezes is the correct answer we are going to write it down freezes i hope that my dear students you too are writing the answers in the blanks in your textbook and those who are writing in the rough notebook later you can watch the video again in the youtube and also you can note down the questions in case if you don't have the textbook next one is dash is water in a vapor form dash is the water in a vapor form is it steam or is it ice so here you have to again recall the concept which you have understood steam is a vapor or ice is the vapor obviously steam so steam is the correct answer my dear students i hope that you are writing down the answers steam is a water in a vapor form number 5 steam dash to form water so what happens to steam and then it is converted into water 
does it evaporates or it condenses obviously steam condenses to form the water right so when the vapor comes up on the lead again it becomes it, it condenses and becomes the water droplets if you remember that concept of the previous lecture so i'm going to place the answer here i hope my dear students you too have written all the answers i have written here so now we have done with fill in the blanks let us choose the correct option that means mcq so again the same thing the students those who are holding their textbook they can just easily tick the correct options but those who are writing in the rough notebook they have to just write the answers obviously you have to give the question number question 1 question 2 and question 3 likewise but then you have just write the answers i hope you all are ready let's get started choose the correct option question 1 in which of these forms does water exist in nature solid liquid gas all of these so in which form does the water exist does it become solid yes because ice is solid does water has this form liquid yes water naturally is in the liquid form then then does it becomes the gas yes when the evaporation takes place or when we heat the water it becomes the gas so here we have to tick this option all of these because water exist in all of these forms in the nature and that is why the name of the chapter is solids liquids and gases now number 2 which of these is not true about air options are it is a gas it contains oxygen which is a liquid it contains oxygen that is needed by all the living beings or it has no shape or size now my dear students i know that to many of you many of these options might be seeming like all are right you have to select one which is not true which is false so obviously three options are right and any one option is incorrect so which is that option i know that many of you have already selected that option b is not correct why because air contains oxygen that is true and then it is written that which is liquid oxygen is not liquid it is a form of gas which we inhale so here option b is incorrect now moving on to next one number 3 what comes out when water is heated options are steam ice water or condensation so when you keep the water in the pan or in any container and when you keep it on the stove to heat it then what comes out after water starts boiling obviously steam the vapor comes out right so steam is the correct answer that is option a moving on to number 4 which of these do not flow and cannot be poured into the containers options are solids liquids gas all of these so which of these does not flow liquids can flow yes gas can flow yes all of these can flow no because solids cannot flow so here that is what the question is which of these can, do not flow and cannot be poured in the containers so again option a is the correct answer that is solid next one which of these processes help to change steam into water so which processes help to change the steam in the water condensation cooling 
boiling or both a and b so my dear students i know that those who have understood the chapter properly they have already ticked the correct answer so here the correct answer is condensation so option a now number 6 which of the following do not have a shape or size of its own solids liquids gases or all of these so which of the following do not have the shape or size of its own solid has its own shape and size liquid has its own shape that means it takes the shape of container but the gas gas does not has its own shape or size nor does it takes the shape of container it just flows freely so here gas is the correct option next is what state of matter is oil oil is solid oil is liquid oil is gas or both b and c liquid and gas what can you say oil is so oil obviously is a type of liquid and the last one which of these does air contain only oxygen water vapor many many gases or all of these so which of these does the air contain now my dear students it is very easy oil is the mixture of many gases so many gases is the answer so with this our chapter 5 revision is over and let us move towards the next chapter chapter number 6 living things and non living things which comes in the unit 3 the world of the living so let's get started with this new chapter i hope that you have also turned the page of your textbook and you are ready to understand chapter number 6 let us start reading and understanding this chapter now what are you going to learn first of all in this chapter is living and non living things differences between living things and non living things so these are the points mainly you are going to understand learn in this chapter we see a wide variety of the things around us some are living whereas others are non living circle any five things you can see in the picture below sort them as living things or non living things so let's circle now first of all i am going to circle flower then i am going to circle this girl then after that i'm going to circle this mirror then tree i hope students you are also circling it and then i'm going to circle this insect ant then i'm going to circle here on the shoes and then on the clothes so that's it now let us see whether they are living or non living thing so my dear students here first of all starting from the tree is this tree living thing yes this tree is living thing then what about this girl girl is the living thing yes so girl is a living thing what about the flower is this flower living thing yes because it is a part of a plant it is called living thing then about this shoes can we say that shoe is a living thing no shoe is not living thing what about the clothes clothes are also not the living thing because it does not have uh, life it does not breathe eat or drink and these insects both are the living things right so this way you have to think whenever you see something you have to think twice that whether they breathe whether they drink whether they eat if they are doing such activities only then that particular thing is a living thing 
So now this was a warm up exercise for you. Let's get started with the reading and understanding part of this chapter. I hope you all are ready with your textbooks. Now, living and non-living things. All animals and plants are living things. Human beings are also living things. Living things move, grow, breathe, need food, feel changes and reproduce. So my dear students, you have to just remember these characteristics that living things what the what do the living things do human beings are also called living things now here they are saying that we are also living thing obviously now living things move living things grow they can breathe they need the food they feel the changes and they reproduce now let us just have the brief idea of each of these points first of all living things move now students i want to ask you can you move from one place to another place now you might be wondering why sir is asking such kind of questions obviously we can move we can come to school we can uh, go to ground for playing we can go to the relatives house we can go here and there so we can move in short so here is what we are going to understand in detail that living things how do they move living things can move on their own animals move from one place to another in search of food and shelter animals dogs cats and human beings walk with the help of legs birds and bees also fly with the help of wings fish move with the help of fins so my dear students here every different animal have the different way of moving from one place to another place like we are the social animal we human beings are the social animal we move with the help of our legs whereas animals like cats and dogs like human being they also have the legs but they have four legs then birds and bees they fly that means they can move with the help of wings and then talking about fish fishes move with the help of the fins now here in the picture fins are shown with the help of which fishes can swim in the water next is they are talking about plants now can plant move from one place to another place no though the plants are the living things plants cannot move from one place to another place so plants do not move from one place to uh, another place because they do not have to look for the food green plants make their own food some plants show movement in a special ways for example the leaves of the mimosa touch me not plant close when touched thus plant shows movement now here like i said my dear students plants cannot move from one place to another place certainly but plants have the different movement according to the sun according to the human touch and one of the examples is given here mimosa plant is the plant in which if we touch the leaves it closes itself automatically so it it can feel it can sense the human being and that is how they can make their movement now talking about non living things so non living things such as books toys and chairs do not move on their own obviously they move only when someone moves them so my dear students right now for suppose you are holding the book just keep the book at one place and on the next day come at the same place will it move on its own no unless you don't take it and keep it at any other place it will not move because it is non living thing right so to non living things we need to put the external efforts we need to push or pull in case if we want to move the non living things and this is what the concept is of how living things move so here they have written 
something for you to discuss it let's discuss trains and aeroplanes move from one place to another place are they living things so just think about it my dear students just now i said that living things cannot move from one place to another place but here in this blue box they have given one situation for you to think about they are saying that aeroplanes and trains even buses and cars these all things can move from one place to another place far wide away then are they living things no still they are not living things even if they can move why because like i said that non living things can certainly move but with the external push or pull effort only trains and aeroplanes cannot move on its own they need the drivers and they need the pilots isn't it so so we human beings move the trains and aeroplanes so still trains and aeroplanes are not living thing though they can move because they are moving with the efforts of human being and not on its own so here they are saying that non living things move only when someone moves them so i hope today this concept of how living things move in which different ways they move is clear in your mind so with this my dear students i end my today's lecture i hope that you will read chapter number 6 thoroughly so that next time when i start or continue the explanation part where we have paused you will be able to un understand the concept more precisely thank you for watching the lecture have a nice day stay safe keep following all the lectures